Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and our second video today and quite a special one. Now, to, earlier today, um, Chris Cassidy, who's been up in space at the International Space Station since early April, landed back on the Earth and uh, will be flying, I believe, from Kazakhstan to Houston, Texas sometime tonight. <laughs> and uh, just before he left the space station, he tweeted this remarkable shot of uh, how he'd done a Sudoku puzzle every day of the mission. And today I'm working the final one, it says. And there he is holding up the page from his Sudoku calendar. So um, the puzzle is clearly visible. So I thought we'd have a go at that puzzle today. And uh, that's what I'll be doing on the channel. Now, to commemorate this um, incredible tweet and uh, delightful case of Sudoku going out of this world, um, we've created our own puzzle, um, which we have featured on the community tab of uh, the channel. So if you look down um, below the video, maybe click on the Cracking the Cryptic and go to the community tab, you will see a um, it's an XV Sudoku, but it has the letters ISS in it. And the fact that Chris has been leading Expedition 63 is commemorated in the puzzle as well. So do give that a go. I hope that Simon will be solving that on the channel for tomorrow's video. He may have solved it already, and I am hoping it was tough because I felt it was. So we'll see how he gets on with it. But that's our very own tribute to, uh, I presume he's Commander Chris Cassidy. Now, just before I start, don't forget our Kickstarter campaign. Of course, it's also in the links under the video. Um, and also the videos on Scott Strosal's Pirate Puzzle Hunt, which are up for, for $3 Patreons and above on the Patreon site. So, with all that ado finally done, let's get cracking. This is just classic Sudoku. So... What can we do? We've got a two five pair here, four, eight, nine, six, seven in the row, one three in the column. Actually, this is a naked single five. Two can go in there. Um, same up here, symmetrical disposition of naked pairs, um, which is not a phrase I've said before. Nine and two must go there. I think that was a naked single. Two goes there. Six must be there. And four, because four has to be over here. So, that's a decent start. Ones in rows five and six give me that one. Uh, three in the central column now has to be up here. That gives us a seven from there. We've got an eight five pair at the top. Two and three are going to have to go in box three in row one, leaving a one nine pair for the rest of the box. That gives an eight five pair in row two, which we can fill in. 169, we can put in the 9 and leave the 16 as a pair to be determined. Let's have a look down the right. Yes, there's a naked single in the bottom right. Um, 1 must be there in box 7, thanks to those 1s. 1, 9, 5, 4, 2, 3. Okay, not seeing immediately what to do next. 75, 6, a 3. Yeah, 3 in box 9 must be there. That gives us the 3. Actually, the 3-1 th disposition was given by that 1 in row 7. Um, still 4, 8, 9 to go there. 2, 6, 7 to go there. Okay, that's not over. That 1, though, fixes the 6-1 pair at the very top. Always a little harder to scan all the way from row 9 to row 1 for some reason. Um, it's a 2, 4, 3, triple that I can't resolve. Ah, and interestingly, right, 7 and 5 must be a pair there, yes, and we can see which way round they go, thanks to the 7 already in row 6. Now that five is ruling out those cells. So five is there, we've got six and seven to place, and there's a seven telling us how they go. Six down at the bottom of column one. Uh, still, yeah, okay, so we can finish box seven. Seven in row nine must be there. Six in row eight must be there, which is great. It finishes off column five. Can't finish row eight yet that I can see. 
735619. Okay, that's a naked single four, which does that whole triple for me. Gives us a three there. This is now four because of the two over here. Now we get nine. Three and four are a pair in row six. So five and six must be above them. Finally sort out the remaining bits of row one. Row two can be done. And now we are working towards a finish. So a decent classic, not certainly one I would consider, let's call it not rocket science in honor of Chris Cassidy. Yeah, I went there, can't help it. I don't know any other astrophysics jokes, that's about it. Um, so that's not too bad. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We will have a look at another classic video in a second, uh, another classic puzzle that was sent to us recently. And I'll see if, see if that's going to hold us up a little more. Hang on one second, I'll be with you again. Okay, so here we are. And this was sent in to us by Brian Dwyer recently. Um, I don't know where he got it from. The, the um, photo he sent of his attempt on the grid didn't look like um, it was in our app, which would annoy me, but I don't think it was. I didn't actually recognize the source. So this is from an unknown site, but let's have a go at it and see what we can find that was that was troubling Brian about it. So row six, we've got two and one that can't go in this box. So first of all, that's a five, nine, six triple. We can put in the five, given the other fives. Uh, two and one, we can finish. So that's all right, four, three, two, seven, five. No, but threes, okay, are leading to a three in column six there. Eight must be in one of those cells. Ah, sevens in columns one and two, give us another number. Seven, one, six, two, eight. So two's gotta be in one of those, eight in one of those. One. Ah, one in column seven and eight is giving another free number there. Eight must be in one of those two. Oh, twos as well in columns eight and nine. There's quite a lot of um, just regular singles from shoots here, which is nice. Uh, it's nice to get going with anyway. I mean, I'm sure we're going to run into a problem at some point, but let's to get a start now. These are obviously three, four, and eight, but that one can't be eight. So let's take out the pencil marks and just leave them like that. That's either six or four, I can see. That's either three or four. I'm mixing my pencil marks a bit at this point, which may not help, but it's beginning to look like one of those puzzles where you're going to need a few kind of extra things to look at other than Snyder notation, which we do normally recommend. Now fives limited to those in column three. Two, five, yeah, it's getting, ah, oh, seven actually is given here, isn't it? That seven's ruling out those and that one there. Ah, oh, and that's great. That unwinds the eight and five that I've been pencil marking. Uh, that sorts out five in box seven as well. Got a one six pair there to resolve. These are all from three and four, or two, three and four rather. So no, that doesn't make this a naked single. That's four or nine. Um, yeah, already we can see this puzzle on a slightly different level from, uh, from Chris Cassidy's. Ah, five. Oh, look, there's four fives looking into box one. So that is very straightforward. Normally when that happens, that's an easy digit to write in and doesn't give you much else. But actually, it's, well, it's totally irrelevant to that. I've noticed that one can be written in there. Ah, now, two, three, four. And that's giving us a two, three, four triple in column two, thanks to the pencil marking I've been doing. So I can fill in six and one. Six is now in one of those cells. These are from three, six, and nine. Um, that one it can't be six, clearly. Hmm, this box is very hard to get much in. Eight, seven, and six. 
Oh, two, right, yes, two there, two must be in one of those cells, so that now is not two. We can place two in box two. Eight, six, so out oh, on that eight has resolved this eight a while ago. Sorry if you've been shouting that while I didn't notice it. Can't see everything all at the same time. Well, so it appears anyway. Um, now, eight's in one of those, one is in one of those, but nine, could be in any. Again, ah, oh, six actually, we can place up there. Four, nine pair, oh, they're resolved. That sorts out nine in the middle box, okay. So, boxes two, five, and eight, they're complete now. Four, six pair here, seven must be placed there. So, oh yeah, four's been resolving that three for a moment or two. Nine and three is a pair there. Still, this box is proving the hardest. Three, four, or nine in the top of it, and in the middle row, two, four, or three. So, now I've pretty much got candidates filled in. Oh, a nine, four pair. So, oh yeah, look, all these sevens have been looking into this bottom box for a while, so you may have noticed that before me as well. So. Let's take out the corner marks. We're left with this, and it does look tricky here, but... Okay, we've got a 3-4 pair. Sorry, I'm highlighting the wrong cell. 3-4 pair in the column 9. So we can take 3 out of that cell. That can't be 8. Oh, there's a 3-4 pair here. Yes, so that's 8. Okay, that's done. Mm, deadly quadruple there, that's not helpful. What else can we do? Ah, yes, this is, yeah, this is a Y wing. Oh, that's nice, right. Look at this cell. This has to be four or six. Now, if it's four, that forces a nine here which forces a six into this cell, just given the candidates that are available. So remember that a four here forces a six into row seven, column nine. The alternative to there being a four here is that there's a six in row two, column eight. So one way or another, one of those two is a six. And that means by the Y wing that this cell, row seven, column eight, is not a six. Instead, it becomes part of a three nine pair and I think that is going to crack what we needed in this puzzle. Six there, sorts out the hinge cell up here. Um, that four hits this, and we're finishing off the rest of, yeah, the whole of boxes three, six, and nine. That four looks across to that nine. This three is the last in its row. They can't be three, we don't know what they are yet, but that nine forces nine in this box four. That can't be three. Yes, and these two can't be four. So they're two and three, four there, and we are done. That's quite a nice finish. And I think I'm guessing that what was troubling was Brian was that he'd got to that stage of the puzzle um, and it, yeah, quite a lot of puzzles actually are unlocked. When, when Y wings occur in puzzles, it's quite late and it's often the last bit that you need to finish them off. I've um, been noticing that actually in testing for our next classic Sudoku update. So a uh, slight hint there for that one. So there we go, two puzzles for the price of one today. Uh, congratulations again to Chris Cassidy. Um, I hope somehow he gets wind of the Sudoku we've created in his honour and uh, maybe has a go at it one day. Um, long flight back to Houston, I imagine, so that would be an opportunity. But uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.